kann den Wetter. Wenn den Wetter. Do you want to test the chat? I have to log on first. Okay. Okay, so we're live on both Facebook and YouTube. The like button. Checking to see. Okay, it looks like the chat is working, except you're not the first one to post. Hello guys, welcome. My name is Marina, I'm the founder of Creatively. I'm also joined here by Alex, uh, the mysterious voice in the background. Hello, hello. hello. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Hello, we have, oh, we already have an international crew. Sort of international, not really. Uh, Ruth from Puerto Rico, Ida. Malena from San Jose, welcome guys. So let me switch my screens. All right, so tonight we are gonna be doing Joyride. A Joyride? Joyride, I can't remember. a Joyride, are we? I can't remember who named this one. What was it named? <laughs> I'm just gonna say this. Um, if this is not the most perfect thing for Mother's Day, I don't know what is. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's a big statement, but you know, it's a. Uh, it could be on par. I wouldn't disagree with you. I like it. Okay. Okay. So we are gonna give you guys about seven minutes to set up, and I'm gonna go through my setup right now. And in the meantime, say hi in the chat. Let us know where you're from. Let us know what you're drinking. Let us know if you're a first time painter. Um, and also this is your time to kind of just continue your setup and grab your drink and do whatever you need to do. So I'm gonna put this over to the side. Alex, you ready for this? Oh, I am so ready. Okay, let the ambulance pass by. That might give away our location somewhere in the New York in the area. city. Okay, so we have our twelve by twelve canvas. Twelve by twelve canvas. We have a check. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Wow. Way to just barge ahead. Sorry, I'm very I'm very excited about this. Okay, so we have a lot of colors this evening. We have seven colors. We have white. Phthalo blue, metallic copper, black, yellow, red, and brown. I hope you're not expecting me to repeat all the colors. No, just say check once. Check. check. Colors. Check. Thank you. We also have our palette paper. So this is facing shiny side up. And this is what we'll be using to mix our colors on. Shiny side up. Palette paper. Check. Thank you. We have our step-by-step -step instructions and sample card. Sample card and step-by-step -step instructions. See what I did there? You just did it backwards. Check. Exactly. Thank you. On your toes. <laughs> we also have our traceable design outline, whatever you want to call it. So we're going to be using this tonight. It's also available on our website. You're also welcome to hand draw this bicycle and make it slightly different. Totally up to you. I think Alex pinned the Creative. link to the from traceable. Creative. I hope I did it from Creative. Yeah. Creative. Okay. So we have the link pinned. If you guys want to download the traceable, it also comes with the step-by-step -step instructions and the sample card as well. Okay, and then we also have our tracing paper. Tracing, first of all, traceable check. Sorry. Second of all, tracing paper. 
double check. Thank you. So if you guys downloaded the traceable and if you're printing it and you don't have tracing paper, you could actually just put it behind your canvas and you could actually see it through. I don't know if this camera is showing it, but you could actually see the drawing through and you could trace it right onto your canvas without the tracing paper. A little, little secret there. The old signing the parent's signature on the test paper on the window trick. I like it. Is, is that, was that a reference to something? No, no but if you hold like a piece of paper, paper over another on against a window where it's oh, light yeah. enough, you'll be able to trace exactly. what's underneath. Exactly. Thank uh. you. <laughs> So we also have our two brushes. We have a size 16 flathead brush and then a round size four brush. Size 16, size four brush. Check, check. Thank you. And if you guys are joining with your own supplies, you could use any large brush that you have and any small brush for the details. Details. We'll see some details. <laughs> We also have a cup with water. Cup with water check. And a paper towel. It's not what I thought the second thing would be, but we have a paper towel handy as well. That's a personal item. Check. And then, so last, actually, no, two more things. So we have a colored pencil for the tracing. It's a little trick so that you could... Um, so you could use, you could use a pen, you could use a pencil, but I like using the colored pencil just so you could see what you're tracing. Is that a artist tip? It does not you? come with a box. An artist, artist tip? And yes. <laughs> was that a check or did it I It was a check. Thank you. And then we also have our adult beverage. So tonight... This is very, I don't know, this is very Mother's Day perfection. So I have a little rosé, which I normally don't drink ever. Well, no. Yes, we're, we're being a little, a little different. Adult okay. Bev, check. And yourself? As well. <laughs> we have a taste Good. Awesome. Uh, should I show this bottle? Because it's kind of really fun. This is the rosé bottle. Um, and I chose it just because of the packaging, because that's what I normally do. <laughs> that's exactly how wine should be chose. Exactly. I like it. Okay, so we have about one more minute to go. This was a lot of stuff, so we just don't have a lot of time left. Are, yes. are we ready almost? No, no prep time. I'm right into it. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay, so I am so excited about this new color. I'm going to show you guys closely into the camera so you could see how it shines. So beautiful. I originally called it uh, rose gold, and then I realized that it was actually copper. So yeah, so we have copper. So we have Jana in the house. Welcome. We have a few people from Canada. Our great white north. north. Staying, Staying strong. strong. Our representation. I love it. Awesome. We have Jennifer from Denver, Colorado. Welcome. See, we have some Floridians. South Carolina. Well diversified crowd. I love it. Okay, so should we should we begin? Oh it's time. Oh we're we're super well we're running a little bit time. behind schedule. It's eight eleven. As you like to say, fashionably late. A little fashionably late. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is I'm going to hold my pencil in my right hand. Not you usually hold a brush, but we're going to do the pencil this time. And you guys are going to repeat after me. Ready, Alex? Oh, I'm ready. I promise. I promise. To relax and have fun. To relax and have fun. To not judge my painting. 
to not judge my painting or the painting of others or the painting of others and to be fearless and to be fearless woohoo woohoo we can start now cheers no one said anything about what they're drinking i don't think i haven't seen any comments I've seen one or anything two people are drinking. Yes. They have but not come up with the details. Anything interesting? Who knows? Okay. Okay. So I am going to take my traceable. And I'm going to position it on my canvas sort of in the middle. So it doesn't have to be all the way to the bottom. It could be in the middle. And then I'm just going to finish these lines and continue them onto the canvas. So then I'm going to take my graphite paper. And so the dark side goes over your drawing. I might need to stand up for this step. Is this the part where we got to press aggressively? We don't have to press that aggressively because you don't want to pierce your canvas. But also artist tip, pro tip. Exactly. Thank you. Wait, no, no, this is wrong. I was about to say, don't you have to Yeah, play? this is wrong. We're going to put the tracing paper onto the... Okay, too much rosé. We're going to put the tracing paper onto the canvas, and then we're going to put the traceable on top of it. And that's how you do it. That was just a test to see if you were paying attention. I was trying to figure it out. I was like, I don't see how it makes it to the canvas, but I also, you know... You're not fully supposed to understand art, so but maybe I'll just get there. This was just a test to make sure everyone's alert. Sounds like Alex, you are. I'm right there with you. Okay, so I'm just going to start tracing this. And I'm just holding it down. Uh, you could also tape it if you want. I don't typically do that. And also, this is kind of a simple uh, traceable. So I'm just going to hold it down pretty tightly. Black cherry white claw is pretty good. That sounds very refreshing. It's obviously probably among the best flavors. That is true. And you could peek to make sure that it's coming onto your canvas. You were just to describe the pressure between a one to ten situation scale. Ooh, can we, we do like one to five? No, let's do one to ten to be a little more specific. Like a four. Like a four. So we're barely a five. Even, a four. We're barely five. a half. Something like that. Okay, I like it. Definitely not trying to pierce the camp. And with the colored pencil, you're seeing everything that you're tracing, so it's super helpful. Because if you do it with a regular pencil, then you might be going over the same lines multiple times by accident, which is still okay. You'd have to be a really good. That means you're hitting the traceable lines right on the line. That was never. And I know that some of you guys are doing this freehand so it's gonna look different and i'm really excited to see what you come up with because your bike is probably gonna look totally different from our bike and that's pretty cool i think do you think anyone will have a motorcycle i hope so Ooh, that's a good idea obviously <laughs> okay so for this line i am actually gonna continue it onto my canvas and i'm just gonna curl it a bit so it's just a continuation of the the frame of the bike i learned so many parts of a of a bicycle when i was writing the instructions down but this was a few weeks ago and i forgot all the parts I was gonna say, if you had one of those you know third grade tests where they ha gave you the outline and you had to just fill it in. Name every part? No, Name I would fail. Part, how good would you do? I would fail terribly. Those were the good old days. So did you know these metal things are called, called the spokes? 
Yes. Okay, good. That one I didn't know. <laughs> so for the spokes, you have two lines here on the, tr on the traceable, but I'm just going to do just one line for each because you don't really need the two. Because it's just to tell you where the spokes are going to be, and then you're going to cover it with paint anyway. Shadow. Okay, should I see what I created? Are you allowed to pee? Oh, I done? missed a few lines. Maybe it's a good to peek. <laughs> a little okay. double checker. Oh, the Just... color pencil isn't helping me. Yes. So I'm just gonna continue the tire from my bicycle and continue making it round. And you'll be able to fix this shape with your paint later on, so it doesn't need to be perfect. And then for the spokes, I'm just continuing them to the tire. And the same thing here, I'm just gonna continue these lines down. Your free hand looks like it. A little right. crooked? No, no, like it's right from the diagram versus I knew if I would try and freehand, there would just be a sudden left hand angle or something. Sudden just you know you in normalcy. You'd be surprised at I'm your talents. Surprised. Very aware. Okay, so I think we're good. I think we got a bicycle. I think we got a bicycle. And just remember, you could always change up the shape of it. Like if your basket is too big or your tire is too crooked, you Maybe could always you change a, it up. One of those big old mountain bicycles, big old tire. Maybe. Maybe it's a motorcycle. Oh, I hope so. <laughs> okay. Who's ready to paint? My paint is drying. I'm ready. Um, this guy. It's got two thumbs and is ready to paint this guy. Only I can see that. That's the point. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take my large brush and I'm just going to dab it on the paper towel. And then I'm going to take my white color and I'm just going to cover the entire canvas with white, but I'm going to try not to go into the design. So I'm gonna paint all around it. And it's definitely gonna go into the design a little bit, but I'm gonna to try to avoid it as best as I can. So this is the opposite of painting inside the lines. Yeah, you're painting outside the lines. Just flipped my whole world upside down. <laughs> what I thought coloring should be. That's what we do here. So you can use a little bit of water just to spread the paint around. It helps it kind of spread onto the canvas much easier. And you guys can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm covering my painting with the white and going around my drawing. And I want to make sure that the paint is pretty wet. So I'm going to be using 
kind of more water than I usually use. Are we still trying to cover the the essentially like no pieces of the canvas should be left uncovered? Yeah, except for the drawing, the right, inside right. of the drawing. Right. Yeah. And it's a little hard to tell which parts are covered. Um, but I'm just gonna assume. Yes. So this is acrylic paint. Good question. But we are using a little bit of water to make it a little more liquidy. If you get inside the lines, that's totally okay. So it's not just me that has a total panic when I'm about to encroach on a lot. Yeah, line. I'm trying to make you feel better. And less panicky. I'm getting some of the white inside my drawing and that's totally okay. I'm not gonna be switching to the small brush for the details, I'm just gonna use my big brush. Because we don't want to be so perfect. I hope you guys are blasting music in the background because we're not able to and we get shut down immediately if we do. <laughs> it's a hard knock life. Streaming live. There's a lot of restrictions. So as you're painting this white, think about which colors you want for your background and for your bicycle. So for the background, we're using a light blue background, but your background could be whatever you want. This is your painting. So you can make it pink, you can make it violet. Probably wouldn't advise copper, but maybe. maybe that could be really cool actually. Fire. Red, bright red. So definitely feel free to just go rogue at any point and change it up. Especially when it comes to the bicycle and to the flowers. So our bike is gonna be our metallic copper. Damn skip it. I can't wait. <laughs> but you can make it whatever you want. You can make it green, pink, black. Lucy, we're here on a monthly basis. Yeah. So we I'm do at your live. So we do our live tutorials on the first Tuesday of every month for the last year or more even. So this is probably our like thirteenth or fourteenth event. Wow. And it's still free for now. That's all I know. <laughs> So with the, what are they called? Stokes? With the Stokes. spokes. I need a bicycle lesson. So with the spokes, I'm just going to go right into them with the white. And just if I'm covering them, that's okay. Except for the middle piece here that's thicker. I'm just going to try to leave that out. But then for the other spokes, I'm just going to go right over them. 
folks. Oops. Okay. sounds like so oh lucy this is a great question so lucy is asking do you take suggestions of what to paint so every month we actually send our email subscribers three themes and they get to choose the painting for the following month so definitely if you subscribe on our website we'll be sending you an email and you get to vote on your theme so the theme with the most votes uh, gets to be the, the next painting of the month. So I'm actually going to show you guys the painting for June, which has been selected by our subscribers. What a teaser. <laughs> what a teaser. Just leave and, them on a cliffhanger like that. And we do take suggestions because that's how we come up with our three themes every month. So if you come up with something cool, we can make it one of the themes and then see if people vote for it. And you, you could also get your friends and family and everyone you know to vote for it, and it's probably going to get picked. I'm just saying. Just saying. Rig the election. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty much done covering the white background. So while my paint is wet, I want to add in a little bit of the blue. Halo blue. While it is blue, while it is wet. Yes, because I want it to blend. So I'm just going to take. There's a hair on my paint. It's going to be in here. Okay, so I'm just going to, I don't need to wash my brush. I just dip it right into the blue and I just want a little bit because this background is going to be very light. So I'm just gonna mix it into my white. Just a dash, huh? Just a dash. And then I'm gonna start from the bottom and kind of take this color up. And it's gonna hopefully blend into the white. If your color is already dry, you could just take more of the white and kind of blend that into the blue. And also you could use a little bit of your water to blend those two colors together. I was going to ask if we should add water to the paint, but yeah. you said paint and water. So I I'm adding a little bit of water. Ingredient down. And this is the part where you can't really mess it up because if you add too much blue or it's too dark, you could always go back in with the white and just cover it up. So that's kind of what I did here. It was a little bit dark and then I added more white to it and now it's good. So I'm just going into here, so the bottom of the bike and adding some of the light blue here. And then also I want the blue in between the basket and the frame as well. So I'm trying to stay outside of the lines, but if it goes in into the drawing, it's totally okay because you're still gonna paint over it. Got a couple questions while we're blending. How do you feel about painting the sides of your canvas? So the sides, so actually that's, we do that sometimes while the paint is drying. I like it if I'm trying to hang up my painting, which I hope you guys do. Um, so it looks really nice just on your wall if the sides are painted. And first, if we were to pretend that someone in this room doesn't know what a mop brush is, first part, what would you tell them? Second part, 
Use a mop brush for your blending. So I'm actually using just the size 16 uh, flathead brush. You could use a mop brush. You could use like a much thicker brush uh, for your blending as well. Um, a lot of people actually use makeup brushes and they go in a circular motion and blend it like that. It comes out really cool. You could also use a sponge, which looks really cool as well. So we're just using this brush right now, but there's so many techniques for blending. That was quite and terrible. hopefully if you're a subscriber, we'll get to try all these techniques eventually. Quite thorough. Was that thorough? Thank you. After mocking me and trying to ask a question and learn, you then proceeded to... I would never. So I'm just adding more white onto the top here, just because it's turning a little bit more blue. I'm actually going to add more white here. I'm so paranoid uh, having my two cups here. Have you together? I almost did. That seems like But it actually says not paint water behind. here, but it still doesn't help. Well, because you can't just be reading the cup every time you reach you know, sometimes you have your head down. You're just so into the painting. An artist in her zone. So I'm just going to wash my brush out because I want to add a little bit more white to the top here. And I'm just adding more white and then blending it right into the blue. And it doesn't need to be perfect at all. It's more of a distressed background. So if you guys want to uh, view any of the steps that we just did, or if you want to take your time on it, you could always pause or rewind the stream. Um, and the stream is also going to be posted on our YouTube and Facebook channels, so you could watch it at your convenience. You could party on your own schedule. So I'm just going to go in here, and I'm going to also add the blue. And I'm... Painting right into the spokes. Spokes. Shokes. Shokes. So I'm just going to cover the entire bottom part with the light blue and I'm using just a little bit of water just to help me blend these colors. So again, if you guys added too much blue, you could always take it away by adding more white. So you never have to feel like you messed up. Right did now. you just complain, completely paint over your spokes? I did. I could still see them though. Oh my god, you're a savage. Why do we even have lines? I can still see them. Can't you see them? Society and its rules are just <laughs> lost. 
when we no longer take heed to the we lives. uh could break the rules at any time Regardless. So I'm going to add a little bit more white onto the top of this painting. And just remember that here you're going to have the flowers, so you don't have to worry about this area too much. Or any area for that matter. I'm so excited for the copper. Are you? Well, the metallic. Uh, that might be... Oh, it's not the next step. But it's... we're almost there. It's never the next step. <laughs> I get so excited and then... You just got to have patience. Okay, so as you could see, I went over some of my lines and I went into my drawing a little bit, and that's totally okay. Is it? Yes. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I'm almost ready for my refill. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> Mary asked a really good question. How do I manage to not dip my arm into the paint? This is only the beginning, Mary. It's probably going to happen. Awesome. After enough years of dipping, you've managed to just realize the natural height needed to maintain. Exactly. Okay, so th for the next step, I'm gonna take black paint and I'm gonna paint in my wheel. So this is the part where you get to change up your wheel if it's looking a little bit crooked, if you want it thicker, you could change up the shape of it here. So I'm gonna use my large brush for this. Feel free to use your small brush if you need to get into some of the details. So I, I think I might switch in a little bit. We'll see how it goes. But first I'm gonna use this large brush. We'll just play it by ear. We'll just play it by ear. We'll just play it by ear. Right, whatever, whatever goes. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> so I actually didn't mark this part with my pencil so this part is actually still the frame so i'm just going to add these lines here so that way this part is the frame going into the wheel so i'm not going to paint on it i'm going to leave it out good thing i caught that good thing in time but if you paint it over it, you could just cover it with paint. There you go. It's fine. It might just anything. take a few layers because it's going to be anything. dark. That's our model. So I don't know if uh, my wheel is crooked. Does it look crooked to you? It looks fantastic. Maybe it's a mountain bike, but with a beautiful basket. Mountain bikes don't look crooked. Maybe from the angle it does, you know, maybe the the wheels like posing in at that 45 degree angle and the bikes hanging down. The... It's possible.
So I actually didn't need to use my small brush for this. I'm just using my large brush, but if you want to get the edges of your wheel, you could just go in there with your small brush. I think I'm more excited for the flowers than I am for the copper. You know, tomato, tomato. Because the flowers are just really fun to paint and you could just be really creative with them. I mean, what way to sell the bike short, but I guess I... The bike can have a cool design on it. It can. You know, the uh, copper. It could be polka dots. It could be stripes. It can be mixed in with something. Exactly. So I'm actually going to switch to my small brush because I want to get some of these details here. So I want to go into here and get that line. And I could really change the shape of my wheel using this brush. So if I want to make it thicker, I could just do that with this brush. If I want to make it a mountain bike. Does this look even to you? Looks a little crooked. It looks fantastic. Thank you. It's always helpful to just stand back a couple of feet and then just see it from a distance. And that way you're able to see whether something is off a little bit and then fix it. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the handlebar. Handlebars. So I'm just gonna create a rounded shape here and just color it in. Like our bike is slowly coming to life. It is. Just by getting the wheel in there. So if you guys are freehanding the bike and your wheel is coming out a little bit crooked, you could potentially use a plate to trace around it. So that way it's like a perfect circle. And then you'll wash the plate. Or you Maybe could use a, a paper plate. Maybe a bowl. Or a bowl, bowl yeah, down. or a bowl, plate bowl. Yeah, just something round, and you could just paint around it just to get that circle. Or your tire could be crooked. What's There's no problem with that. Listen, if the bike, bike runs, runs, that's, that's all, all that matters. Is that the right cut? 
Thank you, Shoka. Yes. <laughs> okay, we are about to get to the copper. Oh, yes. I'm going to switch brushes. I'm going to make sure that this brush is completely clean. Pro tip, dab off on babe towel. Yes. Okay, so I'm going to use the copper. So you're welcome to use any color you want. You can make your bicycle green. You can make it pink, purple, black, whatever color you choose. So definitely this is your time to be super creative. And if you want to make it look like it's metallic, you could just make it shinier by using more white for the highlights. So I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Shiny all the way. Give me a nice shiny white. I feel like it's hard to see on camera how beautiful this color is. The metallic copper? The metallic copper. Is that its official name? That's the official name. Uh, we had some name suggestions for it a few weeks ago. Really? Yeah, and I'm trying to remember what those were. And I can't remember a single one. The one that won the prize. There were some good ones. With no official rename just yet. No. So for this part of the frame, I'm actually going to switch to my small brush. You can also do a couple of layers just so you, you just want to make sure that your canvas is completely covered and you can't see the white through it. So I'm extending it all the way through. And down. And then I'm just going to do this circular part. What is it called? Do you know what it's called? Because I don't. circular part? Yeah. Which circular? The, this one. The center. <laughs> Thank you. Of the wheel. <laughs> the core. The core. Okay, so I'm going to go up into the handlebar. Okay. 
Okay. <laughs> we'll see you again. So I'm coloring in the top part of the frame of the bike now. And then this part that goes over the wheel is there a name for this? I just called it the frame. Of the part that goes over the wheel? Yeah. For some reason, I don't know, just fender or like his. No. Got nothing. Got nothing. Fender. I was right. Boom, Boom goes, goes the dynamite, dynamite, ladies and gentlemen. If anyone knows that YouTube video, massive bonus points as well. The center is the hub, that's right. Ida's all See, I, I knew Ida would know. She's on point. Man City went to the Champions League finals today. It's kind of on point. Tender. I can't believe I threw that out there and was uh, not too far off. And you doubted me. There was such doubt in the look. Is anyone doing this as a gift for their mothers? Honey, you say or with their mothers right now? Seems like oh, Asya has an idea for exactly what she wants. Nothing like mother. partying on a Tuesday with your mother. I'm going to give this to the. Okay, so now we're going to add some highlights to the frame. You ready for this? I'm so ready. So if you're painting in another color, so if your bike is green, for example, you're still going to do the highlights in white. And the more white you use, the shinier it's going to look. more white you use, the shinier it's going to be because you have more highlights. It will look. Mind blown. Okay, so I'm going to also use my small brush for this and I'm just going to dip it in the white and I'm going to create a highlight on the top of this bike. So it's just going to be a line that follows the frame of the bike. If you added too much white, you could always go back to into it with your copper color.
So now it's looking a little bit more 3D. I also think we have a good question with the opportunity to announce the name of your YouTube channel. Just for anyone that wants to watch it there as well and see all your video replays. Sure. So the name of our YouTube channel is actually at the bottom of the screen. It's youtube.com slash creatively box. And boom goes boom. the note. And it's the same for our Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There you go. There you go. So definitely give us a follow, guys. Okay, so I'm creating this highlight. And if I want to take away some of the white, I could always just go back in with the copper and just cover it up. So I'm also going to continue the highlight into the top of the handlebars here. I'm just applying really light pressure with my brush to get this highlight like in a there. Two? Hmm? A two. A two? Yes. And then also down the frame of the bike. We did it. And then I'm just going to add the highlight here as well on the core or the hub. The, hub. <laughs> the core was not correct at all. So then my last bit of highlights is going to go on the fender, so on the top of it. So I covered up too much with the white. So now I'm going to go back in with the copper and just add it back in here. But it's still going to be a shiny, right? It's still going to be shiny because it's copper. There you go. I was concerned for a moment. Were you? I uh, very. In case you did not notice. And you could just go into the white with your copper just to cover up some of it if it looks too shiny. Is that a thing? Too shiny? Couldn't it ever be too shiny? I don't think so. I don't know why I just did that. I should have left it shiny. Shiny is best. What do we want from our metallics? Shiny. Okay, so now I'm going to add in a little bit of the shadow. So 
I'm gonna go in with black and mix it into the metallic. So I'm only gonna use just a little bit. So let me show you what I'm mixing. So I have just a little bit of black and I'm gonna just mix it with the metallic. Just so it's a little bit darker. So I'm going to go into this on the bottom and just add the darker color in here. So you want to make it just a shade darker than your copper. So if it's too dark, just go back into it and mix more of the copper in. Shade darker than... Than the, the copper. Interesting. Because it's the shadow. Ah, well that makes sense. You weren't paying attention. I may or may not have been. That is neither here nor there. So you could wash your brush and just go over the black with your copper just to blend it a little bit. So I'm just going to wash it and I'm going to go back in with the copper and just make it blend a little bit better. Can you guys see it's it's pretty subtle? Powerful. Subtle but powerful. Okay, I'm gonna go in a little bit with the shadow on the left side of the frame as well. You guys are almost done with the bike. Almost. And then it's time for the main event. Yes. And I'm just going down the frame also with this darker color. And then going around the, what was it called? The core. The hub. The hub. Wow. <laughs> it's cool. not my fault I have a very bad memory. <clears throat> so then we're going to add the shadow also to the bottom of the fender. So if your color is too dark, just add more of the metallic into it. So that way you lighten it up. And it should only be just one or two shades darker than your original color. The same if you're painting your bike green or pink or whatever other color that you're using. We did the highlights and the shadows. We still need to work on the, the spokes. But first, should we do a, should we do a refill? 
potentially. Is it time? How are you guys doing? I need oh, a recall. Okay, so now I'm gonna switch to my small brush and I'm gonna mix gray. Alex, do you know how to mix gray? If you fail at this, I, I'm gonna be so upset. You know what? I don't appreciate the type of pressure. I no longer choose to participate in your pop quizzes. But it should be a little black and white. Good job. But I still no longer will participate. That's fine, as long as you answer the question. Okay, so we're going to mix a little bit of black and a little bit of white. You guys can't see what I'm doing. To make gray. It's going to be like a medium gray. Maybe a little bit darker. And then we're going to go around the bottom of our wheel. So there's going to be a metal part, which definitely has a name. The rim. <laughs> I feel like rim just wasn't one of the things mentioned today. I think, yeah, so that's why it has to be the rim. There you go. So we're just painting this curve on the bottom part of the wheel and it's following the shape of the wheel. So it doesn't need to be perfect, but it's following the shape of this wheel. If you went into your wheel too much, you could always just take black and just cover that part up. I think I'm gonna do that because that's what, I, what happens. <laughs> do you bring it up because it may have happened? Yeah, it may have happened to me and I'm like, I know it probably happened to someone else. So I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna follow the shape of the wheel. So that way you could always remove it and then add it back in whatever colors you're using. It would be fun to use some bright color for the wheel, Such like a pink, a pink, wheel. like a pink wheel. That would be interesting. That would be pretty cool. Okay, so now we're going to do the spokes. So we're going to use the same color. So we're going to use the gray. I don't know why I'm washing my brush. I don't need to wash it. You're just overly cleanly. <laughs> so I'm going to use the same gray color. So it's a lot of lines, guys, and they don't need to be perfectly straight. So mine are a little crooked and Alex's are a little crooked. Wow. Wait, is it a hard call out? <laughs> I like this idea, a white wheel. 
I don't know how long it would that stay sounds like it's not gonna stay white for very long. But it would look pretty cool on a bike, though. I'll give I'll give it that. I don't think I've ever seen such a thing. Exactly, the uniqueness would be pretty cool and outrageous. So for these spokes, you could use a little bit of water, and that way it's easier to make your straight line. And I'm barely touching the canvas. Feel free to add more lines than what we had in the traceable. I think I'm going to do that. I think this bike needs more of the spokes. Does it? So I'm going to add maybe a few lines in between. And I'm just barely touching the canvas and using a little bit of water just to help me drag my line out. What if the spokes were different colors? Ooh, what if they were glow in the dark? Now we're on to something. Mm -hmm. Now we're on to something. So I'm adding more and it kind of looks like it's spinning a little bit, right? Or no, did I just make that up? Whatever. I think it's spinning. Might be a reference from too far back in the day, but that's what Little John said. Spinning it, no, that's Chris Rock. Spinning it, spinning it, spinning. It that does look good. like though that would that would now that Thank you've added you. a few more. Thank you. You can't say no to what I'm saying. No, 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 I can see it. You know, now that you've added a few more, but I definitely think we're onto something with these glow in the darks. Is anyone making a crazy bicycle? Like, does yours have any patterns? Is it polka dot? Is it striped? Is it like, does it have crazy zigzags or maybe someone's a name? Logo? Maybe a logo? Schwinn. Trying to think of like a, a bicycle brand from back in the day. Schwinn. Yeah. yeah, it's like the, the cruiser I bikes. Of, I was thinking of mongoose. A cool little street bike. Mongoose sounds like a mountain bike. No, it was like more of a street bike. But it, it was fun. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the bell. So the bell, I'm going to make gray, but you could make it, you could make it gold. You could make it, gold? yeah, it could be copper, it could be... Could be black. Copper could be something. Yeah. Since my bike is copper, I'm going to make it a different color. So I'm going to use gray. So I'm also mixing the white and the black or using whatever color I had pre-mixed already. And I'm just going to color this in. Also using my small brush. So then I'm going to add a little bit of a white highlight on the top of my bell. So I'm actually going to mix white into my gray color just to make it a little bit lighter and see what happens. Because the white I think might be too intense, so I'm just like mixing it into the gray. So this is actually a lighter gray. So that way it's a little bit more subtle. A little off-white. Yeah, so it's a little, a little highlight on top of the bell. You don't want to make it white because my background is actually white there, so I want to make sure that it's visible. That makes sense. And should we add a shadow underneath? Hmm, maybe. You gotta be like, hell yeah, we should. Yes, we should, obviously. Okay, so I'm gonna add a little bit of black to my color, and then I'm just gonna go in here and add a darker gray. So if yours is too dark, you could always go back in and lighten up the gray by using more white. 
maybe I'll add a little shadow to my just a little ringer. So I think we're ready for the flowers. Yeah, let's do it. Did I switch to my large brush? I think I'll switch to my large brush. So I want to make sure that my large brush is clean. Paper towel dry, dry off. Always. Always. Okay, so I'm going to use red for my flowers, but you could use any colors you want. So you don't need to make... So these actually look like... A mix between peonies and roses. Possibly roses. Um, so you could make whatever flowers you want. So I'm going to show you guys the technique and you could go crazy with your bouquet. So I'm going to use a little bit of the red. And I'm just going to create my darkest color for my flower. So I'm going to do this crooked shape here. I don't know how to describe the shape. And then I'm going to do the bottom of this rose as well. So kind of looks like this and it doesn't need to be perfect at all. So this is my one of my large flowers here. And then I'm going to use a little bit of the white and I'm going to mix it into the red. Also, feel free to add a little bit of yellow into your color so it's like an orangey pinkish color. Um, totally up to you. I'm just going to use red and white for mine. So then I'm going to do the outer petals by adding a lighter color into the middle here. So I'm actually going to use a little bit more white so it actually shows up. And then I'm going to add it around the top of the rose. And then also to the bottom. So it's kind of looking pretty messy. And the shape is not really defined yet. So then I'm going to switch to my small brush and I'm going to add some more details to this flower. So I'm going to take just straight up white because right now my paint is wet. So it's just going to mix into it. And I think, it, I think it's going to be a light pink. So we'll see what happens. So I'm just adding these curves. And here for the outer petals. And they're circling around this flower. So it looks fuller. And the center of the flower, I'm still leaving my darkest color. So if you want, you could go back in with your dark color to add more of the darks. So this is pretty much what it looks like. And you could go in here with your light color and just maybe make the rolls a little bit fuller if you want to. So 
So I'm gonna wash the brush because maybe I'll go in here and maybe I'll add more of the dark red, maybe to the center. So that way it just sticks out a little bit and you could go in here and you could add some of these darks to the bottom of your rose. Just play around with it and you could always subtract the white and you could always add it back in. So just see whatever looks good to you. And all of a sudden it just, it just comes together as a, as a flower. So this is my first one. I'm going to add two to three more. And feel free to change up the colors at any point. So I'm going to continue using my red. Um, but if you want to add any pink flowers, purple, uh, whatever you want. Green roses? Is that a thing? Uh, not Yellow? Yet. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go back in with my large brush and do the red part. So I'm going to add, so this is like a pretty messy shape here. So we're actually going to paint the basket last. Um, but if you want, you could paint the basket. The reason that we're painting the basket last is because we're going to have some flowers hanging over the basket. And once you paint the basket brown, then it's hard to get those lighter colors in there. So if you want some of the flowers to be yellow or light pink, it's going to be really hard to add that over the brown. So we're going to do that as one of our last steps. So I basically added two curvy strokes for my rose with the dark color. And I'm going to go in, so I'm going to add more white to my color to make pink. And then I'm going to go and add some of the lighter colors in here. just a few strokes of this lighter color and it automatically just looks like a flower transforms transforms and then maybe i'll add some strokes to the bottom here of this flower so this one is facing the opposite direction So then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go in with my small brush and I'm just going to make some smaller white strokes in there for my outer petals. So I'm just going around with my small brush and just adding some of these tones with the white. I'm leaving the center the dark color and just going around. It's kind of like a, a little bit of a, like a tornado movement where it's just going around this rose. I like that description of tornado movement. And it's, it's pretty messy. So it looks pretty messy, but... From afar, it looks like flowers. So I could go in here now and add more of the dark red if I wanted to. So in the middle, I could make it a little bit darker. And then maybe I'll add a few of the dark red strokes to the bottom of this rose. I 
and you could just keep on going with your white and just adding more and more texture and more of these outer petals. Wonder if anyone's transformed their roses. I, I honestly, these could be peonies. I think we need to go to botany school. If it's in the eye of the beholder. So I think I'm gonna add one more rose and I'm gonna make it hang over my basket. So I'm gonna make it a little bit lower. So I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna start by making this type of shape for the bottom of the rose and then the little guy here on top. And then I'm gonna go in with my lighter color. So I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna mix it into my red. And I'm gonna do the outer petals with the lighter color. So just keep in mind guys, your roses could face any direction you want. So it just depends on where you put the center. So I'm gonna go around here, making sure that I'm leaving the center dark. And then maybe I'll go into the bottom here. And you could continue adding roses throughout in your bouquet. So I think I'm only gonna have three. Maybe I'll do a smaller one over here, um, but you could continue making it a lot fuller. So then I'm gonna switch to my small brush. And then I'm gonna take white, just straight up white, and then I'm going to add a couple of strokes around this rose for the outer petals. And it's turning pink, which is good. I think I, did I get paint on myself? No, I did not yet. So then I'm gonna go into it and add back some of the dark parts. So I'm gonna go into the center here and add a little bit of the red and then maybe a few strokes around and on the bottom. These flowers are so fun to do. And this is the basic technique. So you just add your darks first and then your lighter petals and then the white parts of your petals. So the very front petals. And you just keep going and adding texture and then it'll somehow turn into this beautiful flower. Magic. It's magic. Oh, oh. And then maybe I'll add just a little one here, just a tiny one. So this one's gonna be facing front. So that's why I made the center dark and then around it, I'm painting the darker color. Then I'm gonna go into it with the lighter red.
And then I'm gonna wash my brush and go into it with the white. So I'm gonna add some of these lighter petals around. And it's already starting to form into this flower. Okay. I think I'm ready for the yellow flowers. Are you ready, Alex? I'm so ready. Okay, so now we're gonna do the yellow flowers. So the yellow ones are super, super easy. So we're just gonna take the yellow and we're just gonna create a few petals. So it's just, so it's, it's actually really hard to see on the screen. Can you guys see it? So it's literally, it's just a few petals. It almost looks like a, a, a tulip, I think. And then we could do one here. And then maybe one here. So add as many as you want. So this is just a few strokes and this is your flower. So then I think I'm gonna add the purple flowers. I don't know if they have a name. What kind of flower do you think this is? Purple flower. Wow. Lavender. Does anyone have a name for these, these purple guys? So for the purple, we are gonna mix the red and the blue, and then maybe we'll add a little bit of white, depending on the kind of blue that you have. So we have a dark phthalo blue. So the purple comes out really dark, so I'm gonna add a little bit of the white to it. And just keep mixing until you get the color that you like. Alex, you were so right with your lavender. Boom. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm throwing out these guesses. Lavender, fender. You doubt me, but they're just spot on. So these are the easiest flowers. So we started from the hardest to the easiest, because uh, why not? So you're just adding dots to these, and you're kind of thinning it out at the top so there's more dots towards the bottom so that it looks like it's thicker and then at the top it's kind of thinning out and maybe curving kind of does look like corn purple corn that's a good one purple corn 
So it's definitely fuller at the bottom and then at the top it gets thinner. I'm trying to see if I should add more of the purple corn anywhere else. But I think I'm good with this. I think you have some good lavender. <laughs> so then, if you want, you guys could add a little bit of pink to this lavender. So you could add a couple of pink dots just to give it a little bit more dimension. I couldn't help myself. I wanted to add more. I could see. <laughs> Had to do it. The lavender had to be more bountiful. So now I'm going to wash my brush and we're going to add in the green. Ooh, lilacs would be so pretty. So this is the part where you guys get to go crazy and you could add in whatever flowers you want. So I'm now going to do the greenery. So Alex, green. Blue and yellow. You're so good. So I'm going to mix blue and yellow. So depending on what kind of blue you have, just play around with the proportions till you get the green that you like. If you want it to be lighter, just add more yellow to it. If you want it to be darker, add more blue to it. So I typically don't add any white to my green. If I want a really light green, I just add more yellow to it. And then I'm just gonna go in here and I'm just gonna cover the in between in green. And around here as well. And then I'm just going to create these leaf shapes. Going down the basket. It's kind of an oval shape that's thinner at the bottom. And that's going to be my leaf.
I'm trying not to get it into the red just because the red is not dry yet. So I want to make sure that the colors don't bleed into each other. And then maybe I'll have some leaves at the top here as well. I feel like the green is really making it come together. What do you think? I agree. It helps, helps it all pop out. Yeah. So I'm also going to create some of the green green corn on the sides here so it's just going to be exactly like you did with the lavender so you could have some dots just adding more of this lushness green corn you said. green corn i have much to learn <laughs> So I'm just adding it to the top, I'm adding it to the sides, I'm letting it hang down a little bit. So that way it just all looks really lush and full. And so for this, these leaves, I want to add a little bit of shadow to the tops of them. So I'm going to add more blue to my green to make a darker green color. So I'm just adding just a little bit of blue to this. And then I could go into my leaves and just add a little bit of this darker color to the tops of them. And it's just going to give them a little bit of this three-dimensional feel. I don't know why I'm washing my brush constantly. I don't need to do that. So then I could add a little bit of yellow to my color, actually a lot of yellow to make it lighter. So I'm just making it a lighter yellow. And you could add some highlights to the bottom of your leaves. There's some highlights to the bottom of our leaves. Yeah. Interesting. So this is just a lighter green, and I'm just adding it to some of these leaves. And maybe this really light green color could go into this green corn a little bit because why not you're just adding a little bit of dimension to it so i want to add a little bit of shadows to the yellow flowers. So this is going to be super easy. So I'm going to make sure to wash my brush completely. So I want to wash it completely and then I'm going to make an orange color. I'm not even going to ask you this time. 
So I'm washing it completely. So I'm gonna mix red and yellow. And I'm gonna add a little bit of this orange color to the tips of these yellow flowers just to give them a little bit of dimension. Can you guys see it? So I'm adding it to the bottom of these flowers, so to the bulbs. Is that what you call them? Maybe. <laughs> So now these yellow flowers are really starting to come together. Actually, they finished com coming together because that's the last step of these flowers. Zing. <laughs> they look wonderful. I'm just going to add a little bit more green into here. So guys, before we go onto the basket, I do want to show you our next painting. What? Alex, you ready? Finally. So this is going to be the June box. And I think this is one of my favorite paintings. I love it. Because it's like, it's so simple. Thank you. So this is going to be our June painting. It's called Tropic Like It's Hot. And the waves are so fun to paint. And so are the clouds. And so the, is this uh, tropical water. And so is everything. And so is everything about it. <laughs> so this painting actually comes with a fan brush for our monthly subscribers and our return customers. So if you guys have purchased from us before, we'll automatically include this fan brush with your box, which I don't know about you, but um, I like when things come for free. I'm a fan. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. Oh, that was a good one, I just realized. It's a late hitter. <laughs> So if you guys don't know about Creatively, we actually send out these Creatively boxes with everything you need. So it comes with the canvas, with the paints, uh, the palette paper, smock, basically everything that you need. Also the printed instructions and the sample card and a link to the video tutorial. So we are including this brush for our monthly subscribers and for our return customers. And also this brush is, could be purchased as an add-on item. So super awesome. If you want to make this a gift for your mom, mom. or a friend's birthday, um, it makes a really, really awesome gift. And we also offer free shipping, which I think is one of the main par best Huge. parts. <laughs> Okay, so if you're interested in seeing any of the other paintings that we have, uh, check out our website, it's creativelybox.com, and we have a ton more paintings that are just as awesome. So Alex, you ready for the basket? I'm ready for the basket. Okay. So we're gonna make sure to wash out all this paint from this brush. So we're gonna make brown. Actually, we already have brown, so we don't need to make it. But if you guys 
are making brown, it's really easy. So you just mix either, uh, you could mix all the primary colors. So blue, yellow, and red, and that'll make brown. So just figure out the proportions a little bit. Just keep playing with the color until you get brown. So we actually have brown that's, that was included with the box. So you don't have to mix it. Um, but we're going to mix brown and the yellow together oh, to make I a see. light, I guess, golden color for your basket. And it's all straw. A little straw color. Okay, so we are gonna start painting the basket. We're gonna go in horizontal strokes. All the way up. I'm probably gonna switch to my smaller brush. So someone is asking how much the boxes are and how much is the shipping. So shipping is actually free currently on our site. Um, so the boxes range from $39.50 to $27.50, depending on whether you subscribe or not. So if you just wanna get a box without being a monthly subscriber, it's $39.50. And if you subscribe for 12 months, the boxes drop down to $27.50 per box, including shipping, which is an amazing deal. I mean, it saves you hundreds of dollars for the year, which wow. is pretty incredible. And it then there's also like saving money. Yeah, exactly. And there's also options to subscribe for three months where you get a big discount as well, and then six months. So I think I'm gonna switch to my small brush. Here we go. And I'm just gonna get the details underneath the flowers. You don't wanna paint over your flowers, huh? I mean, you can, and then you could paint the flowers back. That's always Maybe an option. Maybe it would give it the allure that they're almost being contained within the basket. I think you just made that up. Why? Perspective, no? Sure. Perspective. So my basket is looking a little dark, so I think I'm going to add more yellow to it, to the top. Because my original color uh, should have been a little bit lighter, probably. So I'm just going to go in here, and I'm just going to add a little bit more yellow. How could you? <laughs> or I'll just have a darker basket. That's fine. Maybe you have like a newer basket that hasn't had a chance to fade and weather and yellow oh. up over time. Is, is that a thing? It could be if you want it. So I'm adding a little bit more yellow to my color. And for the bottom, I'm gonna add a little bit more brown actually because I want there to be a shadow. We're doing a lot of shadows today. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more brown and I'm gonna mix it in to the other color. So it's kind of blending in.
So I don't think I mentioned this, but we love seeing what you guys created. So if you post it on social, please tag us, use hashtag creatively box, and then we'll be able to share it on our social channels. And just look at your really awesome work. I hope someone created a motorcycle. You could have been that person. I was inside my head. <laughs> So now we're going to take some of the brown and we're going to create some vertical lines in the basket and then some horizontal lines. So your lines are not going to be perfectly straight. They're going to be a little bit curved because your basket is curved. So just make sure that your lines are curving inward a little bit. The nature of hand woven. Exactly. And then the same thing for the horizontal lines, they're also going to be a little bit curved instead of just going straight across. Because if you just make the lines straight across, your basket is going to look very flat. We did it. We have one more step to go. Two more. Two more. Two more. <laughs> so I'm just going to wash my brush. I might need a refill before this next step, who knows? Okay, so we are gonna take our black color and we're gonna create the base of this uh, basket. So this is for the rack. So I'm just gonna create a horizontal line underneath the basket. And that's the bottom of your rack. Racks on racks on racks. And the edges of your rack could go up a little bit. Okay, so this is the bottom of your rack, and now you're gonna have the two, um, what are they called? I don't know, support bar or something? <laughs> I'm looking Always. at Alex for all the answers. And that you shouldn't be. <laughs> so then we're gonna create a line here going down And then the same thing on the other side. So this is going right over your wheel and then down into your hub, I remembered. If you want, you could add another line in back. And I'm applying just really light pressure with your brush.
And Alex, I think the last step was to sign your painting. There you go. And we are done. You guys did an amazing job. I can't wait to see what you created. Tag us. We want to see it. We want to see it. So thank you guys so much for joining. Don't forget to share what you've created and tag us using hashtag creativelybox. And please follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. YouTube. Thank you. The YouTube. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time on the first Tuesday of June. Right? Yes. Right. <laughs> Thank you guys. Have a good evening and happy Mother's Day to everyone who's celebrating. Bye. Bye.